Did you know that some trucks have gained a reputation for being the absolute worst in American automotive history? From poor performance to unreliable builds, these trucks have left a mark for all the wrong reasons. In this video, we'll dive into the 10 worst trucks ever made in America. So, stick around until the end to find out which truck tops the list. Number 10. The Chevy LUV, 1972-1980 Introduced in 1972, the Chevy LUV was General Motors' attempt to meet the demand for small, fuel-efficient pickup trucks. Essentially, they took an Isuzu Faster, slapped a Chevy badge on it, and called it a day. The LUV featured a 1.8-liter four-cylinder engine with a modest 75 horsepower. One might think it made up for its lack of power with reliability, but that wasn't the case. The Chevy LUV was as dependable as a weather forecast in tornado season. It had a habit of breaking down at the worst times, leaving owners stranded and wondering if LUV actually stood for left unexpectedly vacant. The handling of the LUV was equally disappointing. Taking corners felt like an extreme sport, and driving on the highway was a nerve-wracking experience. This truck made you appreciate surviving your daily commute. The build quality was also poor. However, the LUV did have one positive feature, fuel efficiency. In an era of gas-guzzling vehicles, the LUV could squeeze a few more miles out of a gallon of gas. Despite its many flaws, the Chevy LUV managed to stay in production for eight years. Maybe it was the fuel efficiency, the low price, or just the 1970s spirit of embracing questionable decisions, like disco. Number 9. The Dodge Dakota Convertible, 1989. The Dakota Convertible was Dodge's attempt to add some excitement to the pickup market. And they did, just not in the way they planned. This odd vehicle was basically a regular Dakota with the roof chopped off and replaced with a flimsy fabric top. The Dakota Convertible was known for chassis flex, leading to squeaks, rattles, and a driving experience that was more rickety wagon than a rugged truck. But the issues didn't end there. The convertible top was about as waterproof as a strainer. Owners reported leaks that could make Noah consider building another Ark, and that soft top was an open invitation to any thief with a pocket knife. Unsurprisingly, the Dakota convertible wasn't a big seller. Dodge only made it for two years, from 1989 to 1991, and sold fewer than 4,000 units. It turns out that the overlap between people who want a pickup truck and people who want a convertible is very small. Number 8. 1976 Cadillac Mirage The Cadillac Mirage was a vehicle that lived up to its name by making you wish it would disappear. This Frankenstein's monster of a vehicle was essentially a coupe de ville with the rear half chopped off and replaced with a pickup bed. Interestingly, Cadillac didn't even build these themselves. They outsourced the conversion to a company called Traditional Coachworks. A massive 8.2-liter V8 engine powered the Mirage. Due to the emission standards of the time, this gas-guzzling behemoth only managed to wheeze out a pathetic 190 horsepower. It had all the fuel economy of a tank with no power. As for practicality, the bed was too small for serious hauling, and the luxury interior meant you'd think twice before loading it up with anything dirtier than a set of golf clubs. Unsurprisingly, the Cadillac Mirage was a commercial flop, only about 200 were ever made, which is probably 200 too many. Number 7. 2003-2006 to 2006 Chevrolet SSR Introduced in 2003, the SSR was Chevy's attempt to create a retro-styled, high-performance pickup truck. The SSR's design was certainly eye-catching, resembling a 1950s pickup truck that had been squeezed through a time warp and given a modern makeover. With its bulbous fenders and retractable hardtop, it looked like something straight out of a cartoon. Unfortunately, its performance was equally cartoonish but not in a good way. Under its vintage-inspired hood, the SSR initially packed a 5.3-liter V8 engine, producing a rather underwhelming 300 horsepower. Chevy tried to address this in 2005 by upgrading to a 6.0-liter V8 with 390 horsepower, but by then the damage to its reputation had already been done. But the SSR's problems went beyond its lack of muscle. For a pickup truck, the bed was tiny, barely large enough to haul a couple of grocery bags, and forget about towing anything substantial. This truck had a towing capacity that would make a compact car blush. Sales of the SSR were, to put it mildly, disappointing. Chevy had high hopes aiming to sell 13,000 units per year. 
In reality, they struggled to sell 9,000 in any given year of its production. From 2003 to 2006, Chevy only managed to move about 24,000 SSRs off the lot. To put that into perspective, Ford sells more F-150s in a slow month. With a starting price of around $42,000, it was significantly more expensive than many more practical and capable trucks. For that kind of money, buyers could get a well-equipped full-size truck with actual utility or a genuine sports car with real performance. Number 6. 1972 Ford Courier The Ford Courier was born out of a partnership between Ford and Mazda, with Ford essentially rebadging Mazda's B-Series pickup for the American market. It was Ford's answer to the growing demand for compact pickups, spurred by rising gas prices and increasing competition from Japanese imports. Unfortunately, this answer left a lot of questions. The 72 Courier had a bold appearance, but bold doesn't always mean beautiful. Its boxy shape and peculiar proportions made it look less like a truck and more like a delivery van that had been chopped in half. Under the hood, the Courier packed a mighty 1.8-liter four-cylinder engine that wheezed out a whopping 74 horsepower. But surely, it made up for its lack of power with reliability, right? Well, about that, the 72 Courier was notorious for its flimsy construction. Rust wasn't just a possibility, it was practically a guarantee. Owners often joked that you could watch their couriers rust in real time. The interior was another low point. Ford seemed to have taken the compact part of compact pickup a bit too literally. The cabin was cramped, the seats were uncomfortable, and the materials used were cheap enough to make a dollar store blush. Number 5. 2002 Subaru Baja The Subaru Baja answered a question absolutely nobody was asking. What if we took a perfect Subaru Outback and chopped off the back to make a tiny pickup bed? It's like Subaru's designers were playing automotive mad libs and somehow ended up with this Frankenstein's monster of a vehicle. The bed was so small it could barely hold a couple of grocery bags. Subaru tried to remedy this with a switchback system that allowed you to fold down the rear seats and extend the bed into the cabin. Great idea, except now your groceries are riding shotgun while your passengers are left on the curb. Under the hood, the Baja started life with a 2.5-liter boxer four-cylinder engine producing a yawn-inducing 165 horsepower. Subaru later offered a turbocharged version with 210 horsepower, presumably for those who wanted to reach their destinations sometime this century. Sales were, to put it mildly, disappointing. Subaru had hoped to sell 24,000 Bajas per year. In reality, they only sold about 30,000 over its entire four-year production run. It turns out that when you create a vehicle that's neither a good truck nor a good car, people tend to buy neither. Number 4. 2006 Honda Ridgeline The Ridgeline was Honda's first crack at the pickup market. This truck suffered from a severe identity crisis. It wasn't sure if it wanted to be a car, an SUV, or a pickup. It failed spectacularly at being all three. The 2006 model quickly revealed its true colors with a laundry list of issues. We're talking failing brakes. A suspension weaker than wet cardboard and electrical gremlins that would make Einstein throw up his hands in defeat. Honda, a company known for bulletproof reliability, suddenly found itself with a truck that spent more time in the shop than on the road. The Ridgeline was supposed to be innovative, but instead it innovated new ways to disappoint its owners. It's a testament to how even the most respected brands can stumble when they step out of their comfort zone. Honda learned a valuable lesson. Just because you can build a truck doesn't mean you should. Number 3. Ford Fairmont Durango This automotive oddity was born in the early 1980s, during a time when car-based pickup trucks like the Chevrolet El Camino were still hanging on to relevance in the American market. The Fairmont Durango wasn't actually a Ford factory production model. Instead, it was a conversion done by National Coach Works, a company specializing in creating unique vehicle modifications. The Fairmont Durango was Ford's half-hearted attempt to compete with the Chevrolet El Camino and Ford Ranchero. The Durango's truck bed was so poorly designed that you couldn't even use it properly. If you dared to drive with the tailgate down, the tail lights and license plate would face the pavement. But perhaps the Durango's greatest sin was its price tag. This automotive Frankenstein's monster cost about $2,000 more than a Chevy El Camino. That's right, Ford expected people to pay a premium for less utility and more awkward looks. It's like charging extra for a pizza with no toppings. Production numbers were so low that Ford didn't even bother keeping records. 
The commonly accepted number is around 212 units, built over two years. To put that in perspective, Ford sells more F-150s in an hour than they sold Durangos in total. Number 2. 1978 Dodge Ram 50 The Ram 50 is proof that even a broken clock is right twice a day, and Dodge was very, very broken with this one. First off, let's talk about the identity crisis this truck was having. The Ram 50 wasn't a Dodge, but a rebadged Mitsubishi Mighty Max. Dodge looked at their lineup and realized they needed a compact pickup. And instead of designing one, they just slapped their badge on a Japanese truck. Under the hood, the Ram 50 boasted a mighty 2.0-liter four-cylinder engine. This powerhouse churned out an earth-shattering 93 horsepower. This truck didn't accelerate. It politely requested that speed increase at its earliest convenience. Owning a 78 Ram 50 was a great way to get to know your local tow truck driver on a personal level. These trucks had a nasty habit of breaking down more often. The electrical system was about as reliable as a politician's promise, and the transmission had all the durability of a sandcastle at high tide. But perhaps the Ram 50's greatest sin was its utter lack of personality. It wasn't particularly good at anything, but it wasn't memorably bad either. Number 1. 2002 Lincoln Blackwood This luxury pickup was so impractical it made a chocolate teapot look useful. The bed was not only small, but it also had a power-operated tonneau cover that added weight and complexity. And let's not forget the side-opening rear doors instead of a tailgate, because who needs practicality in a pickup truck, right? The Blackwood was only available in rear-wheel drive. A pickup truck that can't go off-road, it's like a fish that's afraid of water. Lincoln priced this beauty at a whopping $52,000, more than some luxury cars of the time. For that price, you got a truck that couldn't tow much, couldn't haul much, and couldn't go off-road. The market response was as cold. Lincoln planned to sell 18,000 units in the first year. They managed to sell just over 3,000 before pulling the plug after just one year of production. That's right, folks. This truck was so bad it didn't even make it to its terrible twos. So, which of these vehicular disasters surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe.